Welcome to the Taxing Subjects Podcast, brought to you by Drake Software. I'm Ryan Norton, and today we're going to be discussing the new drafts for the Form 1040, and we're joined for that discussion by Drake Education Tax Team Lead, Amanda Watson, and Drake Federal Tax Manager, Robin Miles. Welcome to the show, you two. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Ryan. It's great to have you back again, and just like last time, we're just going to jump into this one because there's some stuff people probably want to hear, and we'll just get started at the beginning. So, Robin. Yes, sir. Why was the format of the 1040 changed for tax year 2018? Well, there's a lot of answers to that question, Um, but basically the IRS is trying to look at the reality of tax preparation right now. Used to, if you think back to 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you would receive a booklet in the mail that had a 1040, it was blue, and maybe a Schedule A and some instructions. And you would sit down at your kitchen table with a pencil and you would you would read, okay, what do I put on line one? What do I put on line two? That isn't really how taxes are prepared anymore. Now you punch all your documents into a computer and the computers prepare the return for you. So they're trying to change their view of the, of the preparation and of the 1040. Instead of being an input form, they're viewing it as an output form. So to do that, they're, they're, they want to make everything more streamlined and um, easier to understand. So in the past, we've had a 1040EZ, a 1040A, and a 1040, and that was IRS's attempt 20 years ago to help people at the kitchen table make it easier for them. Um, but since we aren't doing that anymore, they, they're switching it to just be one document, which is the 1040, and it's much shorter and succinct and easier to follow, and everybody's looking at the same form now. We're not looking at three different forms. Yeah. All right. Well, Amanda, um, could you say something more about the new schedules? I know that some people have some questions about the new schedules that have been created uh, to supplement the new Form 1040. That's right, Ryan. The 1040 um, is a lot, um, like Robin said, it's much um, more streamlined. And the IRS is using what they're calling a building block approach um, with a shorter main form, but it can be supplemented with these new schedules, schedules one through six. So there are six brand new schedules for 2018 and these additional schedules may be needed by some folks some some taxpayers may be able to file the 1040 without any schedules um just a little bit about the schedules again there are six the first schedule is additional income and adjustments and on that schedule you'll find things like schedule c income schedule e income and some of those adjustments or above the line adjustments that we've seen um on the 1040 um and this is schedule two is tax and that is additional tax such as amt um, that's something you'd find on schedule two um, among a couple of other things on schedule three non-refundable credits and of course not everyone would qualify for these credits like the other schedules and it may not be needed but some reasons that you'd need to file a a schedule three would be foreign tax credit education credit residential energy credit and um, as we move down to schedule four we have the payments excuse me other taxes and that would be like self-employment tax And um, we're also going to find the section um, 963, 963, 965, (laughs) that's why I have Robin here, 965, the new section 965 would flow from Schedule 4. Um, Schedule 5, we have other payments and refundable credits. Those would be like your estimated tax payments. If you made those, they would be reported on Schedule 5 and then, of course, flow to the 1040, like Robin said, as the output form. And the last schedule is Schedule 6, and that would be needed to be filed for foreign addresses and third-party designee. And one really cool thing that I want to point out about these six schedules that is going to help tax preparers and people familiar with the forms is that they generally have the same line numbers as the historical or the 2017 1040. So, for example, Schedule C income on last year's 2017 1040 flows to line 12 and 
for 2018. It still flows to line 12, however, it's on schedule one. So it does preserve those line numbers, which I think will really help people in the transition. I think it will too. Those schedules, these new six schedules are basically representations of different sections of the 1040 that you're accustomed to seeing in past years. Um, it's, they're just removed from the 1040 so that you don't even have to look at them if, if those kinds of things don't pertain to you. All right, well, aside from the six new schedules, um, what are some other uh, significant changes that we can expect as a result of the new draft for the Form 1040 and the schedules themselves? Well, one thing that's going to be very obvious is the exemption section from the top front of the 1040 is missing because there is no deduction for exemptions this year. That's completely gone. The dependent section stays there, but it changed a little bit in that um, in past years there was a column where you would put a, an X if the child qualified for the child tax credit. Now, since everybody else qualifies for the other dependent credit, there's a column, so there will be an X either in the child tax credit column, which is $2,000, or in the other dependent column, which is $500. Right. That, that's a huge change, Robin. You're right. And another thing that is immediately noticeable when you look at the new 1040 is that the signature section for the taxpayer and the um, paid tax return preparer has moved to the front page. So it is at the bottom of the front page of the new 1040. Which is going to be uh, interesting that you sign a form that doesn't even have any money on it because the money is all on the back page. Right, because usually you say, what's my refund, or how much do I owe, and then you sign. So yeah. I have to flip back it's and forth. It's definitely a flip, yeah. Are there any changes to the um, questions used to determine standard deduction? The standard deduction. Um, the questions that are used to s determine standard deductions, questions like, can someone be claimed as a, de as a dependent? Are they over age 65? Or are they are blind? Um, are asked under the name entry spaces. So it's a little bit different for 2018. It's very different layout, yeah. Well, Robin, uh, can you give me an example of a taxpayer uh, who could file on the new 1040 who would not need the supporting schedules one through six? Sure, there's actually a high percentage of the population that's going to file just with the 1040 and not need the additional schedules. Anyone who has, like let's say your uh, family, got some kids, um, you work and receive a W-2, you're not self-employed. Um, you're going to be receiving earned income credit or child tax credit or even education credit, and maybe even your itemizing. You have interest, dividends, um, pensions. All of these things are directly on the 1040. Well, let me correct that. Um, the Schedule A would still be attached, but it doesn't involve having another schedule, the one a six. new schedule. Yeah. Right? Um, there's a high percentage of people that will not need any of the additional schedules. Right, and if they do need one, it's likely they only need one or two, not all six. Right. Amanda, is there anything else that's new on the Form 1040? Well, there's one, um, at least one new line that I think a lot of people have been talking about in the industry, and that is line nine on page two, and that is for the Qualified Business Income Deduction, or the QBI deduction, and that is a new 20% deduction for flow through entity income. So there is that that's opening up a, a total new topic, but there is that new line there. So this next one is a two parter. Are these forms final? And where can someone go to find them? These forms are definitely not final. Um, I think this is the third iteration of the 1040 and the schedules that we've received from the IRS. Um, there will definitely be more iterations coming. But I, I think we're getting close. Right. I think that getting close is important, especially at the time of year we're in. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's looking for that final. But as Robin said, there's still drafts. And you can see this new 1040 draft, and I recommend anyone in the, in the business go out there, take a look at it, and get yourself acquainted with it. And I know you can't really show the form here on our podcast, but it's really important to go take a look at that. And you can find this draft form as well as the six new schedules and any other forms that are in drafts um, at irs.gov slash draft forms. So irs.gov slash draft forms. In line of these new forms, is there anything that professionals need to consider going into tax year 2018 and that filing season? 
Yes, probably the biggest thing they're going to need to consider is their pricing structure. I, I think historically a lot of preparers charge a certain dollar amount for 1040 easy, maybe a flat rate even. Uh, there is no 1040 easy anymore. Um, same with the 1040A and the 1040. Um, they're going to have to decide, uh, you know, if I start with just a 1040, how am I going to make that fair to the different um, taxpayers that I serve? What, what kinds of so you really you really do need to as Amanda said go to the draft forms website and look them over and figure out how you're going to how you're going to do your billing this year well that's it for this episode I want to give another special thanks to Robin and Amanda for being here it's a pleasure to have you both we are so happy thanks to be for here. having us Ryan. thank you and we'll see you all on the next taxing subjects podcast